Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with www.learnvisualstudio.net, where I teach beginners the skills that they need to get their first software development job building Windows and web apps for some of the world's best companies as quickly as possible. In this lesson, things are going to start getting more interesting. First off, I'm going to demonstrate how to accept input into a console window application. And then based on the user's input, we're going to write logic to execute different blocks of code. And I'll demonstrate two different ways in C Sharp of accomplishing this. But let's get started by creating a new project. So using one of the techniques that we learned about earlier, I'm going to use File New Project to open up the New Project dialog. I want to make sure I'm in the C Sharp templates. Make sure that console application is selected. And I'm just going to call this Decisions. And then click OK. All right, and then next I want to type in a bunch of code. So make sure you follow along closely with what I do. Okay, remember, pause, rewind if you have to to catch up, but make sure that you have on your screen what I've got on my screen. All right, so uh, the key to this example is uh, line number, uh, let's see what line number it is, number 15 here, where we've previously used console.readline to stop the execution of a Windows console application, so we actually see the results before the application just flashes and we can no longer see the output. However, as you can see, this line of code, we're using it to actually retrieve whatever the user types into the console window. And then next, we're merely in line number 16, concatenating or appending a literal string, you typed, uh, with the uh, value that we retrieved that the user typed in. So let's go ahead and run the application start debugging it to watch it in action. So it's prompting me to type something and then press the enter key. So I'll just type something and then hit enter and it just repeats it back out to me. Awesome. So what we want to do is use this technique to add logic to our application. So uh, first of all, let's get rid of everything we've done here except read line because we're going to start over again and I'll just use this little comment out selected lines button after I've selected all four lines of code here to comment it all out and I'm going to start over and I'm going to do the following. And let me just grab this console line here and move it up into that if code block. Great. Move that over a little bit. Okay. All right. So as you're, uh, if you're still typing this, pause the video. Make sure you have what I have on my screen before you continue on. So what does this code do? Well, when the user types in the value at the command prompt and then presses the enter key on the keyboard. Uh, Whatever the user typed in will be evaluated. If it is the number one on the keyboard, then we're going to display a literal string in the console window. Uh, so the most important lesson for our purposes is the syntax of the if statement. It's called the decision statement because based on the conditions that we set up, we decide whether to execute the block of code immediately following that if statement or not. So uh, in line number uh, 21, you can see if user value equals equals the number one. So that's the condition that will be evaluated. Uh, the condition is surrounded with an opening and closing parentheses. So we're evaluating the string username 
Uh, it is a variable that I created in the previous line of code to retrieve the value that's returned from console.readLine. So if that value is the string 1, then the next line of code will be executed, which calls the console.writeLine method to display the message to the user. So the use of that double equal sign operator, it's different than the single equal sign operator. The single equal sign is used for assignment, so I wanted to set the value of a variable uh, user value to the value 1, uh, then we would have used a single equal sign instead of the double equal sign and we wouldn't have put it in the condition area of this if statement. However, the double equal sign says that we want to determine whether this expression is true or false. So if that expression, user value equal equal literal string 1, if that expression evaluates to true, then perform the code block that's immediately following that if statement. If that expression evaluates to false, then the code block beneath the if statement is completely ignored. All right, so let's go ahead and see this in action. I'm going to hit the start button on my keyboard, and I get the, uh, the question, would you prefer what is behind door number one, two, or three? Uh, so um, I'll tell you what, let's start off by typing the word something <laughs> and hit enter, and you can see that the application exits immediately. Why do you suppose that is? Well, the problem is that we only handled one possible outcome with our if statement. So if we don't enter that code block, the if statement code block, then the application is free to exit moving outside of the main methods code block. So uh, let's go ahead and see what happens though when we hit uh, the number one on our keyboard and then hit the enter key. It says, hey, you want a new car? And then we hit enter key again and it, and it ends. All right, it's probably the lamest game ever created, but Hopefully you can see the purpose of the if statement in all of this. So I'll tell you what, let's uh, expand our application and learn more about the if statement. So we're going to revisit uh, all of this code that we wrote, and actually we're going to write a bunch more. So here, let's let's keep moving on like this. Okay, so let's take a note of a few things here. Um, first of all, you can see that in line number 26 and line number 31, I use the else if statement, which allows us to evaluate additional conditions. So while we can simply use individual if statements instead of using the else if, this keeps everything together and makes it obvious that we're still evaluating the same types of conditions. And then finally, in line number 36, I use the else statement by itself. If no other conditions are satisfied, then execute that block of code, all right? So this time, whenever you start the application and you enter a value other than the number one, you should see a different message. So I'm gonna test the two condition. Hey, you want a new boat. I'm gonna run it again, test the three condition. Hey, you want a new cat. And then let's go ahead and run this one more time. And I'm gonna type just anything in here, something in here. Sorry, we didn't understand you lose. So that's kind of the catch-all, right? The catch-all code block. All right, but we're not done here. Often, developers want to write concise code. Uh, this often improves readability by removing extraneous characters. So developers have learned that if they find themselves writing the same code more than once, it might be a good idea to take a look at that code and see how they can refactor the code. So refactoring is a more advanced topic. 
Uh, entire books have been written about improving the quality of your code by applying some rules designed to improve its quality. And some of these refactorings even have names and people will memorize these and there are tools that are sold that help you do them automatically and things like that. But in this case, uh, we can see that each code block in our if statement has essentially the same commands. It has a console.write line and a console.read line. So we simply need to extract what's common and focus on what's different in each of these code blocks. So let's rewrite this code now to simplify and make this code block a little bit more compact. All right, so I'm going to do the following here. Um, start here and go string message. Then Okay, so you can see what I did here. Let's move up here. In fact, I'm actually gonna take this one step further. I'm gonna get rid of all these code blocks. I'm gonna say, oh my, what is he doing? I'll explain in a minute. Phew how I compacted that. Awesome. All right, so I started off in line number 22 by creating a new variable called message and setting it to an empty string. So uh, secondly, each code block sets the value of message accordingly. All I'm doing here is just depending on which condition is true, I just change the value of message. And then finally, in line number 33, I call console.writeLine and I display uh, whatever is the value inside the variable message and then obviously call the console.readline to pause the execution. Let's see if it works still. Let's type in three, awesome. Okay, great. Now, one other item that uh, might be slightly confusing, in this case, I used the shortened form of the if statement and excluded the opening and closing curly braces. I deleted them out and said, what's he doing? <laughs> uh, you can only omit the curly braces when the if statement is followed by a single line of code. This is merely a shortcut. We could have just as easily surrounded that in an opening and closing curly brace like I originally had here, just like this, and it would have worked exactly the same. Uh, so, but by making these changes, I've significantly cleaned up the if statement and made it clearer what this code is trying to accomplish, at least in my opinion. So of course, when I change the code, I want to test to make sure my application still works. So uh, in this case, when I run it, you know, we already tested this once, it seems to work just fine. Uh, I strongly recommend that you avoid writing long passages of code before you test your work. So keep your additions small and tidy and then test them often before moving on. If you only write a few lines of code before testing, then you're more likely to remember what you just introduced to the application uh, that now may throw an exception. You go back and fix just, I only changed four lines of code. It has to be one of these four things, right? Just makes it a little bit easier. All right, so you need to memorize this whole uh, if, else if, and else syntax, including the evaluation operator, the double equal sign, and when to use the curly braces and when not to use the curly braces. It's simply too fundamental to constantly be looking at a cheat sheet or on MSDN. Uh, it needs to be as familiar to you as typing any combination of words that make up a sentence in the English language. You'll only memorize, however, if you actually get your hands dirty and type in these examples like I'm doing. And you have to, uh, and you need to do that often with these examples and with other examples that you find around the internet. So before we conclude this lesson, let's take a quick look one more time uh, at another way to uh, perform this if then else type of syntax. So whenever you need just a simple either or comparison, 
The conditional operator may work well and fit our right concise code advice. So let's do this, it's coming out everything we've done up to this point. Let's make this real quick and easy here. So let's do that. Comment it all out. Great. All right, and I'm going to type the following. And actually, I want to keep this. All right. So console.write line, would you prefer what's behind door number one, two, or three? We're going to grab the user value, and then we're going to evaluate user value. If it's equal to one, if that's true, then set message equal to boat. If, however, it's anything else except this, so if this is false then set message equal to strand of lint and then you can see that we have some really interesting syntax here at the, the very bottom it uses the string replacement syntax and we'll be using this quite a bit uh, this is an optional version of the console.write line. Um, if you hover over, you can see that there are 18 different or 19 different versions. Uh, off to the right hand side there, it says plus 18 overloads. We'll talk about what an overload method is later, but there's several different versions, and this is one of the versions of the write line method that we can use. We can pass in a number of different uh, values that can be replaced inside of the literal string by using this open and close curly brace syntax with a zero. We could do another one like uh, like this and put um, user value there to add a second uh, a second value to uh, to replace or insert inside of our string. So let's see what this looks like and I'm just going to type in uh, one you want a boat and then one okay and so boat came from this line of code the number one comes from whatever i typed in and it gets replaced here so let's go ahead and remove this and remove that so just be familiar with the string replacement syntax it's a zero based number that you can add to your literal string in a console.write line and insert values into okay and this replacement syntax uh, has some, some special features that we're going to see in an upcoming lesson as well that allows you to format things like currency and dates and things of that nature that you might send to it here as an argument to this literal string. Okay, Okay. so the key idea from this lesson is how to write logic using two C-sharp constructs. And there's others as well. I just wanted to keep this simple to start off with. So you use the if statement to evaluate conditions and add to its utility by adding else if statements and else and an else statement uh, to account for additional scenarios uh, that you need to handle inside of your code. And then secondly, we just looked at this conditional operator for simple scenarios like we just demonstrated, where something's true or false, and based on true or false, we're going to either assign a variable this value or that value, okay? Uh, we also talked about that string formatting syntax, the string replacement syntax. And as I alluded to a moment ago, there's actually another way to write conditional logic, the C-sharp switch statement, and we're going to cover that in a much later lesson in this series. All right, so we'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you.